morning, good morning, Joe and Nash with the Tampa Drain dudes. You know the, you know the thing. Get my boots on. It's chilly this morning, and we got a little bit of rain last night, and so everything's wet. Not that it matters, cause look at my boots right now. Send help. Looks like I'm going wet feet today. Today we're in the Wesley Chapel area. We got a pretty easy yard drain we're installing. Typical Florida, squishy between the two houses. One's got gutters, one does not, so all this water comes off. Makes this yard nice and squishy between here. And we don't like squishy. I shall call him squishy and he shall be mine and he shall be my squishy. Come here, squishy. Come here, little squishy. Ow! Do we, Joe? I don't like squishy and I don't like that the grass is like five inches. It's right. super thick sod. Super thick. So we're gonna be tying in these downspouts. We're gonna be tying in that little AC drip line. And we're gonna be running it down and under the sidewalk. Our favorite. Let's get going. Look at this sod. That is some squishy stuff. Pros about sod like this, it stays together. Cons about sod like this, it stays together. Like it really stays together. It's hard to chop because it just squishes down. Um, but that's part of the job, right? All right, went ahead and started on this front area here. Whenever you're trenching under sidewalks, try to stay in as straight of a line as you can. Keep a good steady slope to almost level is honestly the easiest whenever you're digging it. And then afterwards you can reshape it and make sure you have good slope. That being said, we are gonna be jetting it, hydro jetting it. So we'll make it a lot easier being level. That way, whenever we start on this side, we know we can come in a straight line, staying level through this side. It'll be a lot easier to poke through. Hopefully we can. Some of this is nice soil. Some of this is super thick, dense clay. Might have to get the pressure washer out and actually um, use that on it. Hydro jet with it, I guess, per se. We usually don't bring the pressure washer because the hose and our little tool is usually enough just ramming it and going slow. Plus, we don't want to take off too much underneath that slab and deteriorate it, have it end up cracking later on down the road. Joe's putting in some work back here. Already got the downspout dug. Got the start of this line dug. Tied in the catch basin right there at the drip line. He's moving. Now he's digging a little bit wider so we can drop in this perforated pipe. Now we're using perforated pipe here because we have better soil than usual. Normally we're built up solid clay, but this water actually percolates a little bit through here, which means there's subsurface water, which is why we're dropping that in. All right, we are through under the sidewalk up front. Joe's doing some work back there. Quick helpful tip guys, if you're using this jetter method and you built one of these, Actually, I don't even think we have a video on how to build one of these, so we're going to do that, and I'm going to put it in this link here, all the materials and parts. Maybe, probably not in time, actually, but one day down the road we'll do that. Use this, or if you're using a pressure washer wand, slide it under the sidewalk and put it in the interior of your drain pipe. Use it as a guide when you pull it back through. It'll help keep a straight line, and it'll also keep that drain line that you're installing flushed. So I'll show you how to do that. Take our jetter, slide through. Now that we're through on this side, take your drain pipe.
Joe's back filling it already. You can see back here, whenever he does catch basins, he puts a bowl around it. It needs to be in the lowest point of the yard for these catch basins to work properly. Right here, the drip line, it's in a bowl. So all that water is gonna come out and for sure go down that catch basin and into the drainage system. Just need to chop off the bottom part of that downspout, get the adapter on. He's got the perforated part already filled, dirt back on. If you have good soil, try to use the good soil on top of that perforated pipe. Remember, it's made for catching water that absorbs through the soil. So if you put compact clay on top, it's not gonna work like it's supposed to. Sod's going back on. Whenever we put sod back on, leave it a little bit higher. All I really need is a little bit. Not a lot, baby girl, just a little bit. Then the ground itself. Once it rains and settles over a week or so, it'll put back down to level. If you compact it too hard, it's gonna be below level. You're gonna have, uh, it's gonna look like a little ditch going down your yard. Right down here on this and I'm through the sidewalk, ran the pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the finishing end point right here. So I thought I'd take a minute to talk to you about those. You got two options, three, you got a lot of options, honestly. You could daylight it a uh, ton of different ways. The way we like to do it is with a pop-up emitter. We like pop-ups instead of catch basins. Catch basins are made for catching surface water and bringing them into your line. Pop-up emitters are made for release points. This is a little flow right here. The water can come out nice and slowly. If it's gouging out, it'll lift up and can still allow a lot of flow without restricting it. There's also weep holes on the bottom of these. So if you just have a light rain or just a little bit of water in that line, it can still drain through the bottom, not sit there and get you a bunch of mosquitoes growing. Biggest difference on why we like pop-up emitters instead of catch basins is the size. Yes, it's a six inch catch basin, but this sucker is about eight inches tall. I always call it massive. Sometimes they say huge, not a bad one, huge. That means for water to come out the top at the emission point, it's gonna have to fill up eight inches just to come out the top. These pop-up emitters here are about four and a half to five at the top. So it's a lot easier for water to come out. You don't have to have as crazy steep of grade because most of these yards in Florida, as you know, we don't have huge hills. So every bit of drop counts, three inches, three and a half, four inches like that can make a huge difference in a system flowing correctly or not. So we like to opt for these pop-up emitters. Favorite way to install them, under the sidewalk and right to the curb. Whenever we do, we like to put that edge right here flush on the curb. Not too far, far over where cars will drive over it, but just about here. Alright, just putting in work, backfilling this last section here. Got the pop-up emitter ready at the end. Real good slope coming down. Went ahead and put some drainage rock to help filter on top of these catch basins. As well as in the corner there. Under the AC drip line. We'll get this dirt off, get rid of the excess, sod back on. And we'll be done today, uh, in and out in about three and a half hours. So not bad. That's pretty good. All right. We are all washed up, as grandma would say. Drain is complete. You know, it's already dry over here, actually. Solid ground. Not quite, but once we get a little bit of sunlight, it definitely is going to happen. Got our rock back in, sods back on. Can barely tell this drain was installed. Give it a week, it'll be unknown. Besides all the water that's coming out of here whenever it is raining. Got the pop-up down here with some drainage rock around it. Help any water seep into the ground there if there's some left over in the line. 
you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. We got to get on. Uh, we got two more drops today, little ones, drain flushes, um, but we're going to leave it out of this video. This is a pretty basic, straightforward drain install. Um, if it gave you any value, like, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Check out our channel for more as well. Thanks, guys. Bye.